Hello YouTube, today we'll be doing valve clearances check as well as adjustment if it's required on my GSXR 600 S Rad. It's got 36,000 miles on the clock. Um, according to the service manual, this should be the second check on valve clearances. Hopefully, the previous owner has got um, the first check done, uh, first check and adjustment done on at 15,000 miles. Engine runs fine, sounds healthy, so looks like it's been done. So we crack on straight away without any further ado. Uh, we need to remove the, the seat, fuel tank, and the side fairings, uh, the right hand side fairing to stop it. To remove the seat, you need a 10 mil socket with an extension. Just need to lift the seat like so. Reach for the bolt underneath, and you'll see the bolt. Shouldn't be very tight. It's easier to do across. Easier on the muscle for the wrist. It's an old seat, pretty hard. Once it's loose, a bit more on this side. See, it comes off. For the tank, we start with these two screws here, get a screwdriver, cross it, pretty straightforward, very easy compared to the rest of the important steps which we'll encounter in a bit, long way to go before we actually get to the actual cams and the valves. Two screws and washers. So I've taken out these two screws on here. Um, I've also suspended the fuel tank with this with this arm here which you might be able to see um, or you can support it with anything this arm comes in the in the tail unit so you can just pull it out um, there are two bolts here right down here which you need to undo um, but before that there are there is an electrical connection I'll give you a quick close-up using my handy cam or my mobile phone in this case I don't have a GoPro. Um, this electrical connector belongs to the fuel pump, and you need to undo this electrical connector here. And also, to remove the fuel tank, you need to undo the actual fuel hose which comes from the fuel pump through the inline fuel filter. Which, in, in this case, I've re replaced my actual. Um, fuel filter inside the tank with this inline fuel filter basically uh, the idea is just to remove this hose disconnected from the actual fuel uh, fuel pump so for that you just need to uh, undo the uh, jubilee clip um, and also just disconnect this electrical connector by simply unlocking it and pulling it apart um, so let's do that as you can see I have disconnected the the electrical cable to the fuel pump which is that and I have also loosened the Jubilee clip here so that I can pull this out pull the disconnect the fuel filter it's a bit difficult with one hand go. I've just suspended the fuel filter here while I'm going to be removing the fuel tank but that's the disconnected hose and we are going to be undoing these two bolts here to finally 
remove the fuel tank. So let's do that. To remove these bolts, we need a 12 mm socket. It might be worth removing the tail fairings as well, but uh, you might just get away with it without doing it. Crack these open. And this is the time when you will actually put the fuel, fuel tank flat in the normal position, remove the suspension arm and just undo these two bolts, <coughs> pull them out. Okay, so with these two bolts undone and these two screws undone as well and everything underneath disconnected, the tank should literally lift up. Um, at this point, because we haven't taken the tail fairings off, you will have to just flex these fairings slightly to make clearance for this bracket to come out. Just be careful, take your time. It would come off. It would be best if you just remove these these fairings. I didn't. I'm a bit impatient because I have to make this video as well. Tank lifts off. Store it in a safe place. So now with the tank off, the next job would be to remove the air box. And to do that, you need uh, uh, the, your 10 mil socket again to. To undo the fuel uh, the air box, you need to undo this bolt here and remove this hose from here, the breather hose there, and you, there would be another hose just in front of the air box when you, when you lift it up. To lift it up, you will also need to loosen these three these four screws with the rubber boots. So let's do that. Ball comes out. Store it in a safe place. Okay, so as you can see, I've removed this hose which was connected here. I've loosened these clips on the rubber boots all four of them as you can see I've also taken out this crankcase uh, breather hose from here and we had already if you remember we had undone this bolt on here so now with the, all that preparation work so to speak this air box should just literally lift up I'm trying to do it with one hand and it has as you can see and the final disconnection that you need to do in this regard would be this hose here so let's do that a bit difficult again with one hand so I'll stop filming okay so that's the air box there that's my fuel tank and there we go that's your carburetor and we'll be getting to this all this prep work only to get to the cam cover or the rocker cover. Next job would be to actually take out the actual carburetor and for that you will need to disconnect a load of things and loosen quite a few bolts. So first thing from this end your TPS throttle position sensor this electrical connector will need to be disconnected so let's do that again I'll try to do it with one hand just to show you <coughs> there you go came off fairly easy with that undone you will need to disconnect this solenoid valve okay so 
we have one connecting there disconnected two connecting there disconnected next job would be to disconnect the actual throttle cables and to do that we need to loosen all these bolts the the actual lock nut okay so to disconnect the throttle cable you need a 10 mil spanner to loosen off this lock nut here like so and then you just pull it like that same for this just loosen it off crack it And you can then just remove it from the throttle. With these two out, after loosening your lock nut and pulling these out from the grooves, you can just go ahead and pull them out from the recesses. On the spin, on this uh, pulley on the on the actual carburetor. So as you can see, the two throttle cables, the return cable and the pull cable, um, have been taken out, disconnected from the. Um, the actual on from the from this pulley on the on the carburetor they have been taken out and the next thing then would be to remove this um, idle adjustment screw by twisting the idle adjustment knob underneath your fairing right next to the coolant tank um, expansion tank and you as you rotate it in counterclockwise direction the screw will keep coming out like so, so it's just it's just a waiting game so I'll stop recording and come back just a bit more now nearly there And as you can see, it's out from here. Next thing to do would be to pull out this bung in your in your frame, like so. It's out, and you got a hole in there. And that hole is to actually put your screwdriver in through and reach the boot the intake boots between your carburetor and the actual engine block and same on the other side that bung there needs to come out so that you can reach the boot let me just try it to get to the boot that's your rubber boot and there is a screw in there just like we had on top between the airbox and the carburetor, there's a screw for each of the four intake boots. I need to undo that. So I'll let me just get all the equipment in. You will need the long screwdriver in this case. And reach in for the boots. So there's your screwdriver. And you will see that's your screw there 
See that? That's the screw we are trying to reach. Two. And that's cracked. See that? That's pretty clear. I'm sure you can see that. So let's do undo all four of them. Okay, so with those boots loosened, now you can just pry your carbs out. I'll just check quickly if something else needs to be disconnected. I don't think so. I can't remember, I don't think. So let's try that. Try pulling the carbs out. The wiggle. Take your time. And there you go. So and then you can just oh there you go, there's a um, There's a choke cable that we need to remove. I'll give you a close up with the other camera. Okay, so that's that cable there is your choke cable. If you pull that, you'll see that move. So we need to undo that. And for that, you don't have to loosen any bolts. You just pull this cable towards you out of the groove like so bring it back and then simply comes out and that's it carbs completely out okay so in my hand. with the carburetor out as you can see I've um, put some uh, paper towels in all the intakes to prevent entry of any four objects in there which will cause damage to your valves and uh, the valve seats. The next job would be to remove one, two, three, four spark plugs. To do that, you simply you start by taking out um, the actual cables from the electrical cables from the coil pack boots out. One, two, three, and four. That's your four spark plug boots out. Okay, so the next job would be to actually take out the spark plugs. For that, you will need a spark plug socket. In this case, a 10 mil spark plug socket, and uh, with an extension arm and your socket and you feel for it crack home crack home crack drop it in gently let it settle home and crack and then you can just get rid of the actual ratchet again let it home you'll feel it and wind it. it should come out easily unless you've crossed the last time you put your spark plugs in also your spark plug socket will have a rubber boot which will hold the spark plug in um, when you're pulling it out in my case I remember it's um, it's something is wrong I think the rubber has perished so I just use a magnetic arm like this one to pull it out pull my spark plug out oh, actually, I actually haven't undone it all the way and come on Out it comes. Inspect the thread. All good. Let's 
spark plugs tell a lot of tell a lot about your engine. That's a very healthy spark plug electrode. Store it in a safe place. One, two. Okay, so all my plugs are out, as you can see. And I'm just going to, again, log these in with some paper towels to prevent entry of any foreign objects into my actual cylinder now, in this case. Be sufficient, and the next job would be then to undo one, two, three, four, five, six bolts to get the cam cover off. So let's do that. Okay, to take out the cam cover, you need a six mil X bit. I need to crack open these, should be straightforward. Looks like for these, I will have to use a, an Allen Allen key instead. Yeah, let's try this clearance issue. Hopefully, it will work. crack And finally this one. Crack. Drop down. <coughs> so I'll take these out and I'll see you once I've done that. Very fiddly. Okay, so it's um, nearly 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> need to go to bed, uh, this cam cover is uh, pretty stuck in there, um, we'll have to tap it a bit with a mallet or a hammer, um, don't want to wake up the neighbours or piss them off, so work will re resume tomorrow morning. Okay, so we're back, um, managed to take out the cover, uh, the valve cover. Uh, nothing fancy, a uh, quick squirt of um, good old WD-40 um, around this edge of the valve cover uh, gasket. I let it soak for a, for a couple of minutes and uh, a gentle tap with a hammer and uh, an old rubber glove. don't have a mallet so just cover it up, quick short taps on the edge and um, I saw it come out and uh, that's it, no, nothing brutal. Just make sure nothing broke. There are two dowels or locating pins on the front edge of the uh, of the valve cover. Uh, you don't want to deform it by hammering it in uh, laterally and uh, giving a shear force along this axis. Um, so just gentle tap, just to wiggle it. So that's done. So we now take off the valve cover like so. Keep in a. Neat place, and now we see 
the cam covers. Exhaust and in says EX for exhaust, IN for in. Pretty standard. We got two uh, per cylinder. Per cylinder, we got two valves for exhaust. If you look in there, you'll be able to see, and two for intake per cylinder. That makes it 16 uh, valves per cylinder. Uh, sorry, 16 valves altogether. So you got 16 measurements to do while doing your valve clearance checks. Um, I'll give you a close up in a bit. Next thing we need to do is to take out, before we can do the actual measurements uh, of the valve clearances, we need to take out um, the crankshaft cap on this side, on the right hand side of the engine, and also um, the um, time, timing mark window just above it, which I'll show you in right, a second. So to remove this, we need a 10 mil hex bit on this and we also need a let's see 8 mil yeah 8 mil hex on this one so let's do that now I'll show you one I tried to film it but it's pretty straightforward nothing fancy there there you go cracked and difficult with one hand and no one to act as a cameraman and this one I think I already cracked it yep yeah, this one is already cracked this one comes out okay so with these two caps taken out have a look at this window here can you see that index mark there we need to use a 14 mil socket here and rotate the engine in clockwise direction. Rotate the crankshaft in clockwise direction and you'll see the wheel in there move. What we need to do is the first round is to align that mark can you see that timing mark on there? Focus. See the timing mark on the inside wheel there. There's a vertical line there. Need to align this without much parallax error with the index static index mark. This one here. So let's do that. What that will do is bring a pair of pistons, one and four, I think, to top the center. And in one case, that would be the exhaust. And once you've rotated this another 360 degrees, like so. Come on like so once you've done that and this time it would be um, uh, ignition phase or stroke so these two instances we've got one two three four five six eight in each of the two uh, instances we measure eight clearances on the uh, on the actual cams at the top of the engine. So according to the service manual we need to combine this with another piece of information. So once we have we have got this these two lines come on. Apologies for this. Once you've got these two lines and um, these two markings aligned you also need to check on the left hand side of the cams for this this mark here on the intake cam this notch needs to be facing upwards 90 degrees to the to the gasket face of the head and also the exhaust cam will have this notch roughly 60 to 70 degrees again to the gasket face so let's check that out <clears throat> 
So right now those two lines are aligned. So as you can see we've got the exhaust the exhaust cam has this notch perpendicular to the gasket face or surface of the head and you've got the exhaust cam with this notch roughly 70 degrees again so this matches compare this quickly compare this to this piece of information which I showed you yes so with this setup we can then grab our feeler gauge to measure the clearances on all the valves marked to C one two three four now these are sets so each each marking as C is actually two valve clearances that we're measuring there because I told you mentioned earlier there are two for two sets of uh, valves for exhaust and intake for each cylinder so let's do that okay so here we are with the timing position the timing that we set using our crankshaft and marking method which I showed you just now we can measure the clearance the valve clearances for the exhaust of cylinder number four these two valve sets here the exhaust again for cylinder number three the intake for cylinder number four which will be these two valves and also the intake for cylinder number two here as you can see with our feeler gauge so the range is 0.1 and 0.2 between 0.1 and 0.2 millimeters on the intake 0.2 and 0.3 millimeters on the exhaust so with the feeler gauge we will pull out 0.2 or oh, okay let's start with the intake we will pull out 0.1 and point 0.2 so that's our point 0.2 the rest of it can go back in and come on focus so, so I can see as we've well. got point 0.1 millimeter there Hope you can see and 0.2 millimeters there so let's check out with the 0.1 if it comes any below this we've got a tight clearance we need a smaller shim but that's for later these are all covered in oil let's do the first one with the 0.1 Point one there. We insert it in here and have a feel for it if it's loose or if it goes in nicely. Fingers crossed. Ah, very easily. What about the second one? It goes in easy. So, my intake is fine, it's not too tight, let's see, let's try another one, let's try 0 0.18, 0 0.18 there, let's see if that goes in, or if it's a tight, it's a interference fit or tight fit. Yep, that's a tight fit there. That's looking good. That means it's less than 0.18 and the gap. Is more than 0.1 mil. So let's try point where is it? Point one three. Let's try point one three. Yeah, that is more like 
Yep. So point somewhere I think point one three or point one five. That's looking good. That's pretty much bang on in the middle. So for cylinder number four, the intake clearances are good. So now that I've shown you an intake, I'll show you one of the exhausts and then I'll carry on the rest by myself because it's very difficult. I might make a, even make a mistake if I keep filming and doing all, all the checks like this. So let's um, so move up the, the range. So for the exhaust, like I mentioned earlier, it's 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. So let's start with the 0.2. Give me a moment. So here we are. I've got my 0.18 just in case, 0.2 and I've also got my 0.3 ready. So I'll check, I'll start with my 0.2 and again fingers crossed. Let's try that in the, uh, with the, the exhaust of number 4. You just slide it in and see if it goes in easy. Yep, let's try on the second one. Uh, okay, that's looking good. It's um, beautifully slipping in. So now I'll try a 0.23 or maybe I'll try 0.25. Let's see how that goes. That's a tight fit there, it won't go in. Let's try the other one. Yeah. Well, just slips in. So yeah, again it looks it looks like it's within range. Don't even have to try point three because it's already a very tight or very uh, very tight interference fit, so I'll try maybe a point two three. We'll see how that goes. So let's try a point two three. Yeah, that's pretty much I think that is point two three millimeters. Could be a point two four because yeah. Feels more like point two four on both. Yeah, 0.24 could be 0.245, I think, on either of them. So that's how you do it. For the exhaust, once again, I repeat, it's 0.2 millimeters, uh, 2.3 millimeters, the ranges. And for the intake, it's 0.1 millimeters to 0.2 millimeters. Anyway, if you're going to do this, you will have to, you will need your service manual for all the instructions, your, your, uh, nominal ranges and the actual procedure so that you can follow it's a very safety critical well it's not safety from from the rider's safety point of view it's more about your engine safety uh, you will damage your engine if you do anything wrong or you won't be able to make the correct measurements and your engine will run unhealthy and it will damage itself over time so just pick your electric electronic service manual and I will look through what the uh, clearance are for the SRAD 600. This is it. There are your specification for the clearances. Intake 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Exhaust 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. And I've shown you how to measure it with the feeler gauge. It's pretty straightforward. Nothing difficult there. As long as you follow the correct procedure. Starting with the lining up of the timing mark using by rotating the crankshaft and also looking at the notches here different for different manufacturers but this is how you do it on the SRAD 600 then again you rotate it oh sorry you again you'll have to rotate this 360 degrees with your ratchet and once again when the timing lines uh, are aligned these notches here would be, I think they would be 180 degrees offset. So this notch will be facing down and that notch will be facing 180 degrees. 
the other side. Okay, so I've um, <coughs> performed all the checks across the four cylinders, all the 16 valve clearances that I was supposed to measure, and um, the results are out. Um, well, it's uh, it's a good news for me, for the for the from the health of the engine point of view, but it's uh, bad news for the content of the channel because I wanted to actually show you how to do um, how to adjust how to shim the clearances um, because there are not many videos actually showing you the the detail of how to do it but it looks like I won't be able to show you because um, there's no point all my clearances are within spec uh, so that's a bit sad, sad news I really wanted to do it um, but looks like the engine is running fine. It's, uh, it doesn't actually need any clearance adjustment. It's all within spec. So um, from finishing off this video point of view, let's put it all back together. And that's all that's left, uh, which would all be the reverse of what we did to take get to this point. So first things first, we'll be putting back the valve cover back on. Now the valve cover actually has a has a groove for the actual uh, for the the seal the, for the this rubber gasket to sit in. Um, it does need some sealant or gasket maker at the um, right hand side face and the left hand side face uh, to prevent leakage of oil. Um, but since in the process of taking this out. I didn't break the the gasket or the seal, so um, I guess I can I don't need it. Otherwise, you just need a uh, gasket maker, high temperature gasket maker. I can find it. Yeah, it's just um, RTV. You need a RTV um, high temperature gasket maker for this purpose. Readily available everywhere, eBay, Halfords wherever you want to buy it from or wherever you prefer to buy it from and you put it um, wherever the seal mark well put it around the uh, the covers of the cam ends and that's uh, that's pretty much where you actually need the gasket maker so basically now we put this back on I mentioned earlier there are two dowels Actually, I'll give you a close-up view. Putting this cover back, you just need to make sure that this dowel here and this dowel here, this locating pins, go in the correct places, which is... It's a bit tricky to get that. That's one of them. And there's one on the other side. I don't think I'll be able to get the view. It's uh, pretty tight in there, but similar to that, it's exact rep mirror copy on the other side. Nothing different. So just need to make sure these two locating pins sit in there. And uh, I've heard that these dowels can come out and drop in your um, in the engine, but mine are pretty solid in there. So I think it's a press fit type dowel it, it's not coming out so that's good but just be careful just in case so I'll put this back making sure the gasket sits in its recess neatly and you're not actually uh, it's not sitting on the gasket in a really awkward cockeyed way um, and once that's done we'll just bolt it back together so let me just do that it would be worth putting some engine oil at this point because it must have gone back down and I also put in the feeler gauges between the buckets and the cams so I think uh, even the user manual says to put in some engine oil into the pockets in there I'll go ahead and do that now making sure it's not actually going in into the spark plug holes
that should be sufficient and maybe crank the engine a bit to soak the oil and spread it evenly and that's looking good you can actually see the oil on the tips of all the lobes which is good which is what we wanted so that's done the trick and now we just need to put the uh, gasket back on will be a bit fiddly though not looking forward to it checking the profile of the gasket all round So it seated in pretty well without issues, and I didn't have to. I didn't have to take anything out of. Um, I didn't have to break the seals on the ends of the cams, which is good. Saves time. Um, less work, smaller video, concise video. So now let's bolt this back together. Get the. Um, Valve cover screws or bolts. I think there are six. There they are. They're covered in oil, so should be fine. Not massive, not doused in oil, but they're just lubricated so I don't need to put any copper slip or anything of that sort in there no chances chances of rusting the heads have got some surface rust that should be fine nothing uh, life threatening in here I'm installing the uh, bolts in a cross fashion so that the gasket seats evenly and in the process of actually putting the cover back on I don't distort the profile of the gasket for which I had to put in approximately two minutes of my time making sure it's seating in well and it's in the recess and there's a good seal all around that's looking good I'll just go around and check the profile of the gasket once more that's looking good looking good looking good looking good good from this side, all good. Finally let's have a look in here. Uh, yeah. Yep. All good. So with that done, it's 
just a case of now bolting it back. So I think we'll be needing a let's see what do we need for this? We need a six mil hex bit with a good old ratchet and these are all I'm sure 10 mil uh, sorry 10 newton meter let's put this somewhere more these are all 10 newton meter again oh I remember For these bolts here, the the ones on the on the uh, front side of the uh, engine, because of the interference of the ratchet with the the ram air intake on the frame, you'll have to get your good old Allen key in there. So we'll do that now. That's it. it just be careful not to drop anything in the sparkle even though they're covered just be careful it doesn't hurt and now these Unfortunately, the front ones I cannot use my torque wrench, so I'll just have to feel it. Yeah, that feels about right. 10 newton meters is not a lot of torque, you can feel it. That's it. That's it. about it. That's it. I'll still run the uh, torque wrench for these. So the torque range to 10. It is already set from last time. All done. I was bang on with my elbow. That's it. Can't do that one. Bang on with these. So, so far I've been banging on. That's good. Uh, I'll just nip those outer ones slightly. It won't hurt. Not too much. Just a tiny bit. That's it. Set. Jobs are good in for all of these. So, next thing. What's next? Okay, so it's to install your plugs. Once again, you need your 10mm spark plug socket uh, for, of course, 
your union joint here, universal joint here, and of course with the rubber, my rubber is perished, so I just use my magnetic tool to just gently drop, it's not actually drop, just hoist it in, and once it's home, I just hold the plug with my finger and bring the tool back. I'll do the same for all of them. Because in that way, at least my plug holes have got something in them just to keep them covered from foreign objects. Number one it would be worth cleaning your plugs. But I recently did my plugs, and these are pretty new; they don't need cleaning. So once they're in, I just like to go with just a tool in my hand. Just go in there, wiggle it. Yeah, the plug is now in the threads, and just two fingers. You can feel if the plug is going in silky smooth which it is so I've just hand started it same with the other ones just drop it in feel it this way you'll make sure that you don't cross thread your plugs and it's going in pretty easy centrally aligned as well once again, have a feel and start silky smooth, plugs going in nicely, no cross threading. No issues. Okay, so now that all the plugs are all home in, I'll just go ahead and finally torque them with my ratchet. Not too much, it's only 10 Nm. 
again with the plugs. Quickly check. Not, I don't normally use the torque wrench on these, but I'll just quickly set. Set. I see my hands are covered in oil at the moment so that's it so I couldn't didn't have the correct feel that I normally have hence I'm using the torque wrench on the plugs normally I don't So with the plugs done, you quickly put the the boots, the coil packs in. One, two, three, and four. Make sure they're seated correctly on the electrode. Where's the harness? There's your harness. Says num clearly on it four clip seventy four three two and one. Make sure you root the harness neatly. Like so. Nothing is being stretched or pulled. It's a very comfortable or natural position for the harness. You know your throttle position, position sensor will go roughly here. So there's again no stretch in the harness. That's, you know that's a good position. So that's done. So now we'll put, put the um, timing and the crankshaft caps back on. For that we need good old 10 mil and 8 mil hex bits nothing tricky there so I won't I won't cover that I'll just put them in then don't need to be torqued nothing safety critical there just nip it up with the ratchet So you feel it. Yeah, done. As with that done, we can put the carburetor back on. Two, three, four in the bin. Where's our carburetor? There it is. Put the carburetor back, back in. We start, we reverse the order of removal. So the last thing we took out was the the choke cable. So we put the choke cable back in. I tucked away everything. 
to make enough space to do the valve clearances. Take this out. There it is. Okay, so this is a close up of how to install the choke cable. That's your drum there. That's the soft slot for it. <coughs> and you just put the drum into its slot, like so. And then go around, pull the cable. Done. Then you need to then let me just put this back, align the four um, outlets from the carbs onto the intake boots. Also, this is the time when you want to install your TPS sensor cable clips right in and then then it's just a case of aligning these four carb outlets to the in inlets of the of the engine and push them in you'll have a feel when they snap into the plate into place would be worth making sure nothing is being pinched no wires no cables no pipeline is being, is being pinched By anything else, no fouling anywhere. Nice and gently, no hurry. I'm sure the camera picked up that sound of the calves snapping into place. So that's in. We then just take the take our long screwdriver if I can find it. Where are you my friend? Just go ahead through this hole like I showed you in the first part. You just go ahead and tighten up all the, the boot fasteners, the intake boots. And we tighten it up on both sides. Securing the carburetor on the engine intake. Right hand side for number four and three done. Now on to number one and two. Nothing fancy or complicated about this. Just tightening up the bolt, uh, the screw. All secure. 
<coughs> with that done, put the screwdriver back in place, we then put the cables for the air valves, connect them back in. One, two, that's going to a good view. I again tidied up, I stored the throttle cables away to make space to the checks, the valve clearances. So I'll bring the uh, throttle cables back in now. one by one there they are So we first check which one is a pull pull a pull push. So this the top one when I rotate is pulling. The other one is a return. The throttle works in the same way. So the pull goes on the top and the return goes at the bottom. Since we had only adjusted the lock nuts and not the actual adjustment nuts, so this should these should go straight back in. Maybe the the adjustment nuts were moved slightly because of the during the stowaway process, but we can make those adjustments. Right now, just loosely put these back in. I think they were moved. I can, I can tell. And then we just pull this towards us. Once again, we have the drum slotted in. Once you tr attempt this procedure, you'll understand it's pretty straightforward. That's in. Just a case of getting the return cable into its place as well I think the best thing is to just bring the cable out back out and then get the drum so that you have some leeway and then you just put the drum in the slot root the wire in the recess tighten it up okay you might want to adjust it slightly there we go We need to put the put the actual um, idle adjustment screw back in. Remember this? Oh, got this bloody spring.
stop screwing that back in like so pretty straightforward keep doing it long way to go because of the spring here it starts to get very tight so it's best to use this a, a screwdriver as you can see there's a groove for a screwdriver to be put in so I'm just using a flat head to rotate it and that's it I'll adjust it in a bit with the bike stop again we need to install the uh, this hose first on there before anything because it gets hidden once you mount it on there on these funnels and you just seat them nice and easy on the carbs that's it they're in the right position now and you just use your screwdriver again to tighten up the way I do it is is to get these screws started by pressing down and then install the 10 mil bolt Okay, so the front board bolt being installed now, and the airbox securely locked into place. I'm just gonna tighten these bolts up, uh, these screws up, for the final time on the rubber boots, all the way through, tight, as tight as they can get. So that there are no air leaks. With that done, we install all the hoses that we had removed. I'm sure you'll remember from the time of dismantling. Let's make sure they're all secure. So that there are no there's no scope of any air leaks or anything, which is crucial for healthy running of the carburetor system. Okay, so everything is installed from the airbox point of view. It's nice and solid. All that remains now is the um, is the fuel tank, and that's it. With that installed, we can go ahead and start the bike. So let's go ahead and install the fuel tank. With our fuel tank. Once again, I haven't taken out the tail unit. So I'll have to, once again, this bracket here at the back, it will have to be put in by flexing the fairings when and easier than, than when it came out. So that, that's in. Let's put the bolts back in. One, two.
one, two, Just a case of tightening it up now. I think it was a 12 mil. Nip it up, doesn't have to be too tight. Nip it up, now it's done. So now, good old suspend the uh, support arm to connect everything back underneath and route all the breather pipes as well on the sides of the engine so we got um, sort of connected fuel filter first not going to show you a close up again because it's just the reverse of what we did at the start and that's nothing crucial well it's nothing, uh, it's nothing fancy going on So as you can see everything is connected underneath the fuel tank, all hoses rooted, all hoses con connected. So it's just a case of um, starting up the bike and running it and adjusting the, um, the idle. So let's do that. run and checked um, all that remains is to bolt the the fuel tank down remember these two screws on the front end I've adjusted the idle and everything so bike is running fine bike is running was running beautifully before anyway since the valve clearance is all good so no changes in the way it run or the way it sounds or the way um, or the compression uh, compression of the engine across the four cylinders so unfortunately from the major content of the video th that was it unfortunately I really wanted to do do a proper video of the valve adjustment as well but it is what it is bike doesn't need anything in terms of valve adjustment for now and the last but not least with the the bungs remember the bungs in the frame to get access to the carburetor boots a bit of red rubber grease to enable them to just slide it in without any deformation or cuts or any damage one second one just a quick smear on the edge with the red rubber grease and it goes that's it finally of course the seat again nothing crucial there just goes in like so and can be bolted down with the extension and a 10 mil socket
and that's it bike is all done um, like I said numerous times now um, I really want to do the valve adjustments uh, using the shim um, because there isn't much content on YouTube already on it or detail there is some content but it's not detailed enough I really wanted to do it I want my channel to be focused on the GSX-R600 SRAD I want to do a proper series of many different major uh, service procedures etc fixes common faults reg rack is one of them um, brake service etc etc this was one on the top list which I wanted to do but unfortunately the bike doesn't need it if it ain't broke don't fix it hence um, can't do anything about it unfortunately I prepared um, uh, even a uh, I'll show you a file that I prepared to note down all my um, all my valve clearances um, the current shim sizes and the and the required one using the lookup table in the service manual which I, I think I have printed off so look you have a lookup table each uh, for the intake and exhaust with the valve clearance and the current shim size on the top and you just look up across to find the shim size required for it. I was all prepared with everything but once again unfortunately we don't need it um, so the video content was cut down by 50% hence I included the kind of uh, putting the bike together back again bit which isn't really crucial it's just the reverse of what we did so I just put that in just for the sake of it um, but yeah the bike is back together I'm just gonna clean up my garage and um, I said there will be some more videos actually actually tell you what because we missed out on this content if you do this procedure on your bike and you want to do the valve adjustment as well and you're not unsh and you're not sure send me an email we can get in touch and uh, we can do it together on your bike and make a video out of it and put it on the channel let me know if that's uh, if that's something that you would be interested in doing that would be uh, that would be nice um, but yeah there would be some more videos I need to um, clean my brakes as well in the front uh, and rear maybe change the hoses as well to braid it um, I changed the hose on the rear but now it's, it was still rubber so I, I think I need to change it to braid it at some point a um, few more videos come in I'll even uh, do a um, carburetor sink next time so keep an eye out for that video keep watching the space hope you like this video um, sorry we couldn't do the valve adjustment but hope you like whatever I was able to show you and hope it's, it helps you in uh, it helps you with the with the procedure on your bike hit like or hit dislike share your comments with me and um, suggest any improvements that you would like to see on the channel sorry about the camera work I do it by myself with my um, camera um, and uh, and my mobile phone because I don't have a proper HD mobile GoPro handy camera so it is what it is Right, until then, uh, until the next video, take care, ride safe, and enjoy. Bye.